There are so many great apps available on the iPad to get work done. And it doesn't matter if you're trying to create a presentation, build a document, or even do some quick graphic design, the iPad has you covered. But with that being said, it's important to know the strengths and weaknesses of each app. You need to know what you can do and what you can't. Since iPad apps are always a little bit different from the desktop versions, you need to know their capabilities. But if you pick the right app for the job, you would be shocked at what you can create on your iPad. Hey everyone, Tech Dad here, and I've been using my M4 iPad Pro as my sole device for a little over a year now and I use it to create and produce all kinds of things especially for work so I do project management teaching and YouTube and so I have to make all kinds of documents presentations spreadsheets budgets project schedules I have to get into graphic design for thumbnails and of course for teaching I create all kinds of assignments for my students so for example I like to make project charters in pages I like to make budgets in Microsoft Excel and I'll use PowerPoint or keynote for presentations depending on the need Adobe also also has some great apps for graphic design, especially for those of us that are beginners and don't really have a background in that sort of thing. You really don't need a whole lot of experience to get started with graphic design, even on the iPad. And if you want a more modern approach to document creation, you can check out apps like Craft. Craft uses a block system to build digital documents and you can add text, you can add images, and you can even embed YouTube videos, which is really handy. So in this video, I wanna give you a solid rundown of all the productivity apps that I like to use on a day-to-day -day basis. I want to talk about their best use cases and I want to talk about their weaknesses because believe me, all software has some weaknesses. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so first let's start with the iWork suite, which is Apple's version of Microsoft Office. And so in that suite, you have Pages, Numbers, and Keynote. Pages is for document creation, Numbers is for spreadsheets, and Keynote is for making presentations and slide decks. So let's talk about the positives. First of all, the iWork suite is totally free and so you get it when you buy your iPad. It's just pre-installed and it's pretty tough to beat free. You can use the apps as much as you want with absolutely no limitations. There's no subscriptions. Apple just gives it all to you right out of the gate. The second thing I love about the iWork suite is that there's absolutely no bugs in it. So unlike Microsoft, which can be a little bit buggy on the iPad, the iWork suite just works. As intended, your documents look beautiful, presentations are great, comes with magnificent looking templates, and it's designed for touch first, which is really important. And so you get a great touch experience on the iPad, but it also works really well with a trackpad and keyboard. The setup of the apps is also really simple and easy to learn. And so on the far right of each one of those apps are basically the same icons. And you can find most of the tools that you need in the paintbrush, which is really nice. They have that all collected under one button. If you wanna add things like text boxes or shapes or tables, those are all at the top center. So these softwares are really easy to pick up and start using. I wasn't trained on these years ago. I grew up with Microsoft, but the apps are really easy to pick up on and I use them for a lot of my personal and professional work. Now, here are some of my complaints about iWork. First of all, the biggest problem is, is no one at work really uses it because it only runs on Apple products. Now, you can technically get to the iWork apps through the browser and an iCloud account, but in most enterprise situations, nobody's using iWork. And since you can't use it at work, it's kind of useless to me a lot of the time especially in my project management position. Now you might say, well, Tech Dad, you can convert your documents over to Microsoft versions. I know, but it often doesn't work very well. So yes, you can go and export your documents. So for example, if you're in pages, you can export to a Word document. And sometimes the formatting comes out great and sometimes it's absolutely awful and your document comes out butchered. But even if you can export, that really doesn't help me a whole bunch because I need to collaborate inside the document in real time. And so if someone's working in a Microsoft Microsoft document, I have to jump into that Microsoft document. All right, so next, let's talk about the Craft app, which is something that I've started using recently. Craft has been around a few years and it uses a block system to build digital documents. Kind of reminds me of those web page building softwares like Weebly. Everything that you make in the document, including text, titles, and pictures, are all in blocks. So everything's nice and neat and organized. So Craft is really nice for putting together lots of different kinds of information in really creative ways. So let's say I'm making a document on World War II for my students. I can add in some quick text as a block, I can add a title, and I can even drag in images from Safari. So I really love that Craft supports drag and drop because you can drag and drop all kinds of things into your document. So I'll put a little header image at the top so students know what we're talking about. And then what's really cool is you can actually embed YouTube videos into your document. So it's 
nice and clean and I can put all kinds of resources in this one document for my students. You can also add additional pieces to your document called cards, which is kind of like a link to another page. And so let's say I want to put in a card so my students know the homework they need to complete. They can actually tap the card and I can actually create a list within this page. So I really like that because you can create these quick checklists. So Craft really does well to put a lot of pieces and components that many apps do into one convenient app. It's kind of like having the notes app, the reminders app, and pages all wrapped into one. And I'll say that if you want to collaborate in Craft, you can do it, but that means others are going to have to have buy-in and use the app as well. But it's nice in my classroom, I have that control and I can get that app installed on my students' iPads, not a problem. I'll also say that you need to be aware of the touch controls. So when you use a trackpad and keyboard with Craft, some of the controls don't work well with that trackpad. So make sure that iPad is in front of you and you have access to touch the screen because you're going to enjoy those touch controls when you're using the app. Now, something I will mention is that you can actually get Craft premium features for free if you are a student or a professor. So I'll leave a link in the description below that will give you more information about getting Craft for free if you're a student. All right, next, let's talk about Microsoft Office. This is a huge one. This is the one that most people want to use on their iPad successfully. So in my opinion, the apps are pretty fleshed out at this point. They're very close to the desktop versions, but not quite. And I'll give an example of how in just a minute. But I think iPad OS 26 is going to make these apps even better because of the menu bar. So the menu bar isn't fleshed out right now, but they're going to get to that as soon as the beta becomes the actual live version in September. Then the developers will get a chance to work on that. But overall, the apps are really smooth, great with a touch experience, and great with a trackpad and keyboard. The apps are still missing a few features though, which is really frustrating. I'll give you one example. So let's say I'm building a sheet in Microsoft Excel and I'm trying to track project tasks that are completed and are not completed. Well, in Excel, you can create a drop down and in fact on the iPad on the web version of Excel you can do this you can click the data tab go to data validation and actually set up a list for a drop down works just fine on the iPad in the web version but when you go to the app it's not there you can't do it the drop down works just fine in the app you can select from your drop down options you can even pull down the drop down to other cells and it will copy over so why not just give us the ability to do it in the app there are other things that people have cited on my channel about what's missing in these Microsoft apps. So just know that there are some limitations. You don't have quite the freedom as you would on a PC using these apps or even a Mac, but it's pretty darn close. Now, another thing I'll complain about with Microsoft Office is that it doesn't integrate into the Files app on iPad very well. So you're supposed to be able to use OneDrive and integrate it into the Files app. Well, it's very buggy and clunky. But I have discovered that if you just use the OneDrive app itself, I usually don't have problems getting to my files. Another thing, people People complain about on my channels that Microsoft apps require a subscription. Now that's not a problem if you have a job or if you're a student and a university provides you with a subscription, but if you don't, you gotta pay for it out of pocket. I've got lots of other content on Microsoft Office. You can check that out on my channel. Okay, next I want to talk about Adobe Express, which is so great to use for graphic design on the iPad. I use this to create all my thumbnails and it's super easy to understand and it takes all the hard work out of it for me. So for example, if I have a photo, there are some easy buttons to get the photo to become a background. But if you don't even want to have your own photo, they have lots of templates and options to choose from that are professionally made and look fantastic. The app is also set up for social media, so there's all kinds of social media templates. So if you're creating content for social media, you can pick the platform that you want and the kind of art that you're making, such as a YouTube thumbnail, and there it is. They've got you set up with the right sizes and dimensions for that art. There's lots of tools, ways to add text, ways to add backgrounds to the text and so on. It's very easy to learn and understand. And of course the app is totally free, which I love, but if you want to get access to more fonts and better tools, mainly more fonts, you need to pay a subscription. I've thought about finally just jumping in and paying for a subscription, but Mm, not ready for that yet. All right, so that's my rundown on all my favorite productivity apps, their strengths, their weaknesses. Like I said, every software has its ups and downs, so you need to pick what works for you, what works for your budget. If you have any questions about these apps, please leave a comment. I'll check those out. I'll leave a link in the description below to Craft. You can check that out as well. That's all I got for you. If you like this sort of content, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.